everybody, back to episode 55 of The Harsh Review. Uh, this is our Christmas Day special, brought to you by Sean and Ryan. My name is Sean, and with me, you know who the other one is. Hey, identify yourself. This is Ryan. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> How you doing, Ryan? I'm good. How you doing? Uh, you know, doing all right. It's just uh, another Christmas. Celebrate. Feel, feel like Christmas? Celebrating Jesus. That's right. Does it feel like Christmas? You know, Christmas stopped feeling like Christmas a long time ago. I like birthdays, huh? Yeah. I mean, what do you think the last Christmas was that you were like, yeah, it's Christmas? Probably when I was like 12. And what did you get? I don't even remember. No? <laughs> I don't I don't like it. All that stuff's kind of a blur, you know? Yeah. So remember like in 87... And I got the Nintendo. Right. And, you know, to our mom's credit, she was the kind of the person who would uh, take the main product out of the package and then, like, oh, yeah. set it up, like, present it, you know, like, merchandise it in front of the tree. Yeah. Um, which I was like, you know, people don't do that kind of thing anymore. Now that I think about it, I was like, ah, she made it look like a catalog ad, you know, like, set it all up and everything. I was like, damn. JC Penny. Santa's got some <laughs> attention to detail. Yeah, he had time um, to do this. So, I got the Nintendo, but what did you get that Christmas or that time? Like, what was the big gifts you got? Because I actually don't know. Man, I, I don't... You're asking the wrong person. You uh, really don't remember? I, I don't. Like, honestly, I don't... A lot of that stuff's just... Like, you get that stuff, and then you just have it for a while, and it's just gone. Like... Yeah. You know, it could have been, like, some toy or, you know, maybe some Star Wars something, but I'm not... I don't that's, know. That's that's a shame. You don't have these nice childhood memories. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah just your brain fills up and you got to let stuff go, you know? That's kind of happens how, automatically. That's how it works, you know? You can only hold so much in that that file, so it's like you just kind of start letting stuff go. I mean, it's not like I have bad memories of Christmas. It's just then it's, it's like, not like I go, when I was 11, I got this. When I was 12, I got this, and then when I was 13, I got this. So it's it's kind of like uh yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Going to be more so. That helpful. means if you've got kids, you can just give them whatever the hell you want, and it won't yep. change who they are because they they'll forget about it. Yeah. That's fair. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, with kids, you know, it's stuff when you're a kid, you're getting older. It's just kind of fleeting. You're finding your identity or what you like and don't like, and so you notice with a lot of you know kids and teenagers and younger, it's just they go through phases and. They try this out. They get bored. I mean, attention spans, uh, especially in this day and age with technology, attention spans are just so fleeting. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just, you know, it's just one thing. One day it's they're into this, and the next day they're not into that, and they're into something else. Hmm. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So what have you been doing on your uh, winter break? Not a whole lot. <laughs> the, uh, you know, just kind of resting, uh, relaxing, Put my feet up, uh, doing a lot of reading, um, taking care of some cleaning around the apartment, which is always a uh, fun, like just one of those things you just got to do. But sure, um, you know. But yeah, I got a couple more weeks off, so I actually have to do a little something for work. But I'm probably going to save that for the last week. Um, paperwork, garbage, and stuff. Um, yeah, but not much. Nothing. Nothing too exciting. That's good. Kind of get, just yeah. relax, kind of take things easy. Yeah. Yeah, for me, for the last few days, I've been building out my uh, streaming rig on, on Twitch. So, okay. you, you ever gone to Twitch before? No, I've just heard little stories and, you know, whatnot. Oh, oh, you have? Oh, yes. Not about you, but... Oh, I'm not. yeah, not a big deal. So, you should make an account and follow me over on Twitch. I need the help. Um. Okay. So I play games with uh, my friends all the time. I've been playing games since the 80s. Like I mentioned, the Nintendo I got, I think, in 87. Um, anyways, so Twitch is just a streaming platform. It's primarily used for, for video games, but you go and watch people play games, and they talk, and they interact with people in their chat. Um, it's a good place to go if you're like wanting to watch a game or something like that before you buy it, which is how I started using it. So I'm like, ah, I wonder if this game's any good. Then you go there and you watch someone playing it and then you can ask them questions and they talk to you. They usually broadcast a camera of their face playing the game. 
Um, nice. Yeah, so I had to buy some different hardware, route my like PlayStation feed into a software, and then get a webcam and route that to it, and then put like graphic overlays on it, and then route in like you can pipe in music so people can listen to other music when you're playing the game and all this crap. And then just been doing that with uh, the NFHC podcast crew, uh, Matt, Coates Allen, Pocket Wolf, also known as Dylan. Pocket uh, Wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pocket Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's fun. We've been playing a lot of uh, PUBG or Player Unknown Battlegrounds on PlayStation 4. Have you nice. Have you ever heard of that game? No. Tell me a little more about that. It's uh it's a battle royale game which is basically 100 people are in an airplane and you're flying over an island and then they all parachute out to the island. You can land wherever you want and uh, you you have nothing. So it's just like your little outfit, whatever you have and then you have to run and find guns, ammo, armor, medical supplies, all that stuff. And as you're doing this, everybody's fighting each other like it's a big war and the play zone gets smaller and smaller and smaller and pushes all the players to like a little circle. So by the time you get down to it, it's like really small. Um, I mean, it's the, the map is like the size of Red Dead, just to give you a comparison. Yeah. So you fly What's in, this game called? Uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds, or just put PUBG. Okay. Got it. And then, uh, yeah, so it's a map that's like as big as Red Dead. It'd take you that long to run across it. Um, so you got to get in vehicles sometimes, but... As as the game goes on, the 100 players gets less and less, and then the player area gets smaller and smaller so that it forces everybody into confrontations. Hmm. And you can do squads or duels or singles. It's very tactical, very realistic type of uh, game with its physics and and things like that. Not, not like a Call of Duty, which is a little bit more run-and-gun arcade style. Still, lots of finesse required for that, but it's a different flavor. A little bit yeah. more, a little more action packed. Um, we've been playing the hell out of that game. It's a, it's actually a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I see, uh, see it on Amazon here. It's got three stars. Is it, yeah, like, is it that bad a game or is it? No, it's great. It's really popular. I wouldn't trust yeah. Amazon. It depends on what product you're looking at because it's uh, sure. Um, some people that might be like a the PlayStation version of it. Um, whereas like the PC version, which is way more established, probably rates a lot better. Sure. Um, PlayStation's like a port, so it doesn't look as good. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, I've been doing that and then just trying to close out, um, finishing Red Dead Redemption. I, I'm like really close to, uh, beating that one, I believe. Oh, have you yeah. done like all the side missions? I mean, I'm playing it sporadically. It's no, I haven't done. I haven't know. done many side missions. I've kind of just changed my mentality where I'm just going to uh, just hammer this storyline out and go. All right, let's yeah. just wrap this out. Um, right. Let's move on to the next because there's so many other. I have other games I've been wanting to kind of get to, um, but it, this game is you know very all encompassing, so it, it demands a lot of your attention. But that's not yeah. a bad thing. It's just. You know, um, I could see, I mean, it just seems like there's so many distractions. This game is really made for people with ADHD, right? I mean, uh, yeah, like, a little oh, bit, I, I could, but it, I could go do time. this, but I could go fishing and I could hunt bear and I can, you know, well, there is that element, but at the same time, I mean, the story you really have to commit. And so sometimes you'll be in a mission that's like 15, 20 minutes. And so yeah. that kind of works against people with ADHD. I, I mean, I like where the story's progressing. Um, but I do have to say, like, I kind of it had this detour that wasn't really necessary. And now I'm like at the point to where I'm starting to feel like there's just filler and they're they're kind of milking it a little bit. And I'm just kind of getting sick of a lot of the players or I'm like, OK, or the characters, should I say, yeah, shut up already. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where Dutch. I'm kind of like, exactly. That's where you kind of go. OK, this is just starting to feel like a parody of itself. And so um, God of War won one game of the year. Yeah, and that game was really good, but um, yeah, I think Red Dead could have if it if the controls were better, and the story was a little bit more focused, it had a better pace to it, um, a little more drama in the story as opposed to like cowboy action. So, right, um, I think the staying power of that game it kind of fizzled out pretty quick with a lot of people because their online wasn't ready to go on day one, and um, 
yeah, the story is quite long, and so didn't, didn't they keep pushing the date back though? Like it was supposed to be out. Well, it's out now, but uh, but it's not. Yeah, it got delayed. Well, I mean, it's, too. in terms of the, the overall game, though, Red Dead. I mean, wasn't it supposed to be out a while ago? Or is yeah, it... the whole game got delayed, like a year, yeah. I think, um, six months to a year. Uh, yeah, I mean, the game looks great. They have themselves a really good sandbox that they could definitely update and and evolve. But that's the shame is I think that they're just Rockstar Games is maybe a little too ambitious with what they're trying to do. And uh-huh. um, all the little quality of life details, I think, is what they looked over, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't design games. I'm just speculating because I play a lot of them. Um, so I really enjoyed the story. And, you know, Matt sent me this video of a guy that was kind of talking about all the things he didn't like about it. It's like a 32-minute video. And I actually watched oh. the whole thing. It's a really good video. Yeah. Um, and like every point he made, like I could not argue with. I was like, "Wow, yeah, you're really making this game sound terrible." Um, like you but, walk really slow when you're in your camp. Oh yeah, just the little <laughs> things. Like everything just kind of adds up, and it's really great. I'll see if I can find it, and send it to you to watch. Just yeah, just so you can kind of see like what like a, a a real critical gamer thinks versus your average folks. So sure, but you know. Almost there. I'm almost there. The, ah. So once I kind of wrap that up, it'll really just be probably playing like Call of Duty or, or PUBG or um, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. A- so. Any other like games coming out that are supposed to be a big deal or is this kind of like. That's a good Red question. Um, Ooh, everything up. Yeah. There's a um, there's a, a couple games that are on the. Um, you know that are coming out that should get some uh, uh, some excitement. Um, I can run off a few of them here if you want to kind of get an idea. But I think the biggest one that was displayed at you know E three is you ever played Last of Us on PS four? You know what I have? Yeah, that's yeah, the zombie game, right? Yeah. So they have another one of those, the sequel coming out where you're playing just the girl. Um, so mm. that's that story kind of continues. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, definitely looking forward to that. Um, there's a game called Anthem that's coming out that's supposed to be really cool, but I'm really skeptical. It looks great. It's made by Bioware, people who did like uh, Mass Effect. Um, and it's kind of like a Destiny type of game. It's supposed to come out in February, but, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the games have been pretty popular at least i'm looking for like the survival themed type of games you know like we played a lot of the rust game back when it was popular um Mm -hmm. and that game is really weird you know where you like you spawn into an island basically naked with just a rock and you have to you know hit your rock on trees get wood get stone you have to build your own (laughs) houses eventually you build weapons and stuff and then people can come through and kill you and once you die like you lose everything it's like back to square one so um definitely realistic yeah it's really it was a lot of fun it was really creepy you know that was a really unique game and we had a lot of fun with that um so i'm kind of like for me i'm kind of at that point now where um you know i just don't have like the stamina or fortitude for these long like role-playing type games that go on for a long time you know, so like that's why I enjoy Red Dead, but I can't just like play a single thing. I need something that is more stimulating or challenging. You need it to be, you know, um, competitive. I guess. So yeah. I like I like the competitive side of things. Yeah, but, that's it. Makes makes more sense. I mean, especially if you want to get involved with other people. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's it's true. kind of fun to have those games where you can all jump in and do something. Either it's against each other or as part of a team. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. If you play with your friends a lot, it's hard to like sync up. Like, what's what game is going to be the next one we're going to play? You know, right, um, right. And then you all buy it and you play it, and sometimes they are surprise surprising, meaning that like you have a lot more fun with it. Other times you're playing it really hardcore for two or three weeks, and it just like stops. Um, yeah, the game just like doesn't appeal anymore. You know, that can happen. Fizzles out. Yeah, fizzles out. Womp womp. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's been my time so far. Okay. Not a whole lot. 
you know, it gets dark really early. It gets light really late in the day. So you've got maybe like six or seven hours of sunlight. So it's kind of messing with your attitude a little bit. Getting all sure. Crummy. You could tell like when I'm, when I'm going out just to run errands, you know, people aren't in the best mood. Uh, and it's just amazing how many people are out like still shopping for Christmas. And it's like, oh, dude, I, I took care of that. It. I did all that on Amazon like the day after Thanksgiving. So well, we I'm, spent, proud of, I'm proud of myself. We spent many years in retail to know like it's hard to have sympathy for people who don't plan. And yeah. um, it it's just the, uh, it's actually kind of funny to me watching how many people freak out and don't get what they want and, you know, I went by Best Buy a couple of days ago to go pick up this capture card, and I did the uh, uh, buy online, pick up in store, you know, the Bopus option for it. And yeah, the Bopus? It was, yeah, that's what it's called <laughs> in the industry. Uh, ah, oh. <laughs> um, ah. and, and so it was actually, surprisingly, they did a great job with their POS process and their, their transaction process. It's just on the email. I had, um, I had a little... Uh, you know, QR code, U- UPC reader on the email they sent me, and they had a special line just for it. So I walk up to the special line. I, uh, there's this huge line of people just buying crap in Best Buy. I walk right to the front, and I'm like, I'm here to get my order. Show them my phone. They zap it in the screen. Show my ID. Five seconds later, they hand it to me, and they're like, see you later. And that was it, in and out. That's nice. Um, yeah, that's efficiency. You just plan ahead, you know, take care of that yeah. little uh, bopis. Uh, hey. Um. Yeah, but it was a madhouse. I mean, I did a couple of laps around the store just to see what's going on, and there's just all kinds of people in there. The, my favorite part was this mom with her eight year old kid wanting to like demo something on the PlayStation, and she's like, "Okay, fine, let's see what inappropriate game you're gonna play now." You know, oh. I was like, Gee, "Easy, mother." Yeah, um, th- then don't buy it for him. I know, just like get him a, trip and give him a nice, care. safe board game. You know, it's Fortnite. <laughs> What is he it's inappropriate? Yeah, well. Yeah. Well, oh well. Um, so we're gathered here today. We don't really have a whole lot to talk about. We're just kinda spend a little time with you if you're driving in your car or, or taking a walk or sitting at work. But I figured maybe we can talk a little bit work about on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Well, whenever you listen to this. Ah, uh, yes. Um I mean, what? Let's just talk about the year 2018, 2018, and what? I mean, what? What caught your eye? What stood out to you? What movies or shows did you enjoy the most? Is there anything that was crazy in the news or just entertaining to you, or anything personal? Who knows what? Um, and we'll just yeah. kind of just go for it. I mean, so as far as like movies go, it seems like this year wasn't. I didn't remember going to the movies as much this year. Maybe for the uh, the big ones, you know. Uh, so definitely saw Avengers, uh, Black Panther, Hereditary, uh, Deadpool two, and uh, Black Klansman were the the ones I went and saw. Yeah, uh, I think Black Panther, wise. Avengers. Um, I know I saw that Harry Potter movie. I think A Quiet Place. I think I went and saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Um, Annihilation. Yep, that was a good one. I went and saw that one. Not as much. Yeah, I would agree. I haven't gone as yeah. much as, uh, you know, as I normally would have. But again, that's also maybe me. You went and saw Mission Impossible, I think, as well, didn't you? I did. Um, see, look at this. You're forgetting all kinds. I saw Ant-Man yeah, and the Wasp. Well, I went and saw that one. Uh-huh. Solo, went and saw that one. I didn't see Ready Player One in, in, the, in the theater. Um, I saw it. And yeah, those are those are some of the core ones that I went and saw. It just uh, it, it seems like a lot of the movies were like you know action movies. Um, yeah, that's true. Just more of an emphasis on that. I mean, of course, you're getting all the uh, Oscar contenders at the end of the year, but I'm not really seeing a whole lot of that. Or maybe I'm just not paying attention, or they're not releasing them near me. So yeah, um, I, not paying attention is is yeah. I'm just not nothing's really standing out to me. With those, mm-hmm. like last year, we had a lot of movies that were marketed during this time of year that really caught. But this year, it doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, I'll be going to see uh, Vice on Christmas, so that'll be fun. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, that one's getting a lot of buzz. 
Um, I think like if you were looking at an Oscar movie, I, I really liked uh, Black Klansman. I thought I rewatched it again recently. It's a really good movie. Um, I mean, it's got like a heavy message to it, but it's dealt with like a lot of humor and yeah. it's not so much, you know, centered on one thing. Um, and uh, what's his name? Darth, Darth Maul. Uh, what's his name? Adam Driver? <laughs> Darth Maul? No. Oh, was it so, Kylo what's Ren. his name? Kylo Ren. Yeah, yes. Adam Driver. You're uh, right. Yeah, he did a really good job. Like, he kind of won me over with this movie in terms of his acting and, you know. Yeah, he was great in Girls. Ca- kind of character I, he played. I don't really care for that show, but I've seen him, and that's where I first saw him. I thought he did great in that show. Yeah. So, you know, um, you have you have that. But, yeah, it's just, uh, it seems like the years have been kind of more of an emphasis on stuff on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, you know, the big ones for me were like Narcos Mexico, which we talked about recently. Um, House on Haunted Hill was really good. Um, you know, those were like kind of just a couple on Netflix specifically that really stood out for me. Um, I did see a couple uh, earlier uh, this week that I want to mention. Uh, Venom and Happy Time Murders I rented and watched. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I saw Venom. I minute. watched that. Yeah. So what did you think of that? <sighs> Tom Hardy was pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, he, um, he's I, really I like good with like physical it. acting. It, different, different take for him because he was kind of like a charismatic type of guy. Um, you know, he talked a little bit higher. He had the the chipper American accent. Um, yeah, and it was funnier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, um, it, it, it was almost to me like a little way like halfway through the movie, the Venom started to get like a little parody kind of. It was just kind of silly. Yeah. Um, like when it called him a pussy, I was like, uh oh, like here, here yeah. we go, here we go. Like, and then, yeah. And then the venom just started becoming kind of like this smart ass, like uh devil on your shoulder kind of thing um, for the rest of the movie. And I was like, okay, you know, well, um, so for those who don't know, you, you know, venom, he gets, uh, what, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Brock. Right, Brock is his name. Oh, Eddie, Brock? Uh, Eddie Eddie Brock, yeah, yeah. So Eddie or Brock gets it? infected with the symbiote, symbiote or whatever, um, the alien crap, and then becomes Venom. But it's it's like a Doctor Jekyll, Mister Mister Hyde type of thing, where you know it lives within him, and it's like this duality thing. So he comes off as like the villain. You first see it like, oh, it's a movie about a villain, um. Venom's a little bit more than that. He's a pretty mm-hmm. complex of a character, especially if you saw him in the comics to where he is a bad guy, but he's also a good guy because there's that duality within him. And so it depends on how well like Eddie Brock controls it or embraces it. Um, right. Cause Venom's got his own agenda, wants to eat people and all that kind of stuff. And then Eddie Brock wants to do good, only wants to hurt people. And so, but sometimes allows the dark side to take over when he needs it to be. So, it's it, it's I think they had something there, um, but they quickly kind of went from like this struggle where he was trying to get grips of who Venom was and Venom's talking to him. Yeah. To where he just embraced it and became one with it, and then it just got a little bit campy. Um, you know, it's a short movie. It's like less than an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah, I, I thought it would be a lot longer, but it wraps it up pretty quick. Not that it really wraps it up, but I mean, it's just the movie's done a little yeah. quicker than I thought it would be. Well, because there's a probably about forty or fifty minutes of just like really establishing and slowly introducing you to Venom and all that kind of stuff. Um, when it finally kind of breaks breaks out, and then you maybe get like a half an hour of like action and stuff before they wrap it up. Um, right. So I it was entertaining. I would say that. You know, I paid attention, and I thought they did a good job with a lot of CGI in some parts, and in other parts it just was, uh, you know, a little redundant because you're seeing you can only see like the blob and the thing moving so much. Um, you know, the 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 kid from A Night of, um, I wasn't really feeling him as a villain. He wasn't convincing at all. Yeah. Um, it was like okay, I. It's another one of those like you know, Mark Zuckerberg type parodies where some 32 year olds running this multi-billion dollar organization, sending people to space and has all his power and people do whatever he wants. I mean, that wasn't, he just wasn't believable in that role. Yeah. Um, kind of miscast. Yeah. A little bit. 
So I, I would probably say it's a C plus, but the movie killed it box office wise. I don't understand. It was huge. Yeah, I think it's just a lot of you know everyone loves Spider Man, so it's like that wasn't yeah. really a question. Uh, Tom Hardy's a pretty good draw nowadays. Um, it just I I really see a lot of his range, like you would see in other movies, a lot more like physical stuff. Yeah. Um, which shows you know how good he is, but yeah, I was just I just watched. It, I was like, eh, you know, I. When the thing started talking a little too much, I was like, all right, like, what's going on here, dude? Like, you know, let's call him a pussy. And, like, you know, uh, it's like, where'd you learn all these words, dude? It's mm-hmm. supposed to be like an a- alien thing. Um, so, yeah, yeah so, it was so it was just it, okay. I mean, I don't know. We're talking about a movie that did 28% Rotten Tomatoes, if that means anything to you. I really don't uh-huh. care about Rotten Tomatoes, but because I don't trust the integrity of like collective internet voting. Um, sure, but it made 213 million in the U S and then made 641 million outside the U S. And so this movie made 854.5 million. And when you watch it, it, it just, you don't make that connection. It doesn't feel like that big of a blockbuster. You sure. know, this is so, um, but I mean, it clearly connected with a lot of people, uh, definitely not the Americans. Um, Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's just a little bit of a... It's just the gimmick between Venom and, and Tom Hardy kind of wears off after a while. I thought, I mean, he did as best as he could if the, the script was just a bit sloppy, in my opinion. I mean, he did the best that he could. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, C+, plus, B- minus at best. Um, it's worth watching to stay plugged into a lot of the Marvel stuff, but um, who knows where it's going to yeah. go. I didn't dislike it. It was just kind of a meh. Yeah, exactly. It's like, all right. It is a weird yeah. character to make like a lead on, especially because it you don't know you don't know about the character. It, it doesn't have a lot of charisma at first. Yeah. Um, so he, there you go. Well, check that out. You watched Venom. Venom. Yeah. What was the other thing you yeah. watched? Happy Time Murders. Happy you Time Murders. That? Oh. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> l- let's hear it. Break it down. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know. After this, your your whole uh, image of the Muppets or the puppets are going to be pretty messed up because you see puppets doing drugs, having sex, uh, cursing, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, didn't know until now that uh, Puppet Ejaculate was really silly string. Oh, I, no seen, I saw that scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty wild. But I mean, it's pretty much like what you would expect from that, like kind of like that other puppet movie, uh, Team America. Except, you know, this one, so it was all, like, raunchy and crude, but it this one didn't really have any kind of political agenda or, like, any kind of take on it. It was just really kind of silly and stupid, so. Yeah, um, Team America is very politically incorrect, where, is, yeah. was this movie that way? It was politically incorrect, but with, like, the Team America, you know the guys doing it are really, like, intelligent and they're going for something, you know. Um, this one was just kind of, like, almost get to the point where it's just being shocking just to be shocking. Um, so some of it's like, Oh, you know, just kind of gross stuff, but, um, eh, you know, it was all right. It was entertaining. I mean, Melissa McCarthy's funny in it, but it's not like, um, I'm not going to bring it home and watch it with your parents you know? sure, <laughs> sure. those type of movies, but, uh, it's just interesting. Like the dude that did it was Jim Henson's son, right? Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it'd be uh, you know intriguing to find out what uh, his dad would think of it if he was still around. Well, he's got to so, he's got to differentiate himself somehow. I mean, he's in the puppet business. <laughs> well, he's definitely done that with this one. <laughs> like, sure, he's definitely set himself apart. You don't know if there's going to be other stuff coming out like like this after. It, you know, it was cool. Like all the puppets are interacting with humans, and then for some reason they never explained like all the puppets were like addicted to candy and sugar. Um, and using it like as a drug, all the humans were like addicted to sugar, but it wasn't really explained what that was or what the connection was. So that was kind of weird, but like they're like, they're just like pouring themselves uh little cocktail glasses, of like maple syrup, you know, and drinking that down. So that was kind of odd. I don't know what, what that yeah. was all about, but um, you don't really expect this kind of film to be, you know, explaining all that anyway. So, Okay. Yeah, but like Venom, it's pretty cool. It was like an hour and twenty something, so not that not that long at all. Sure, but yeah. 
So not going to win any awards. Sure. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So in a year where I mean, you know, Marvel cl- clearly dominated the box office. Disney had a had a huge you know presence. Um, lots of different movies. Some we saw in the theater. Some we did not. I mean, what are a couple that really you know stood out to you in hindsight, where you just really thought are like these were my these were my favorites or my my best takeaways for from 2018. Well, like I said, I little I liked uh, Black Klansman in terms of like a drama. I think that was really good, you know, really good picture to watch. I think everyone should see that. Um, Avengers, uh, Age uh, not Age of Ultron. Avengers, uh, what is it? What's the subtitle for that one? Uh, Avenger, Avengers, Avengers, Inf- Avengers, Infinity War was great. Um, loved watching that one. Um, I like Deadpool too in terms of of like a comedy kind of action superhero movie. It was very different. And I think that's why, you know, a lot of people connect with that kind of movie. Um, a nice surprise was uh, hereditary. Yeah, I would agree for, for me. You know, that was like, I, I don't really see myself going to the theaters to see action movies um, that much, but or sorry, horror movies, but that was different. And then uh, like a kind of like an art science fiction film. I really liked that. It didn't seem like a lot of people liked was uh, annihilation. Mm-hmm. which I thought was was great, you know. Um, but those kind of movies are going to be harder to connect with people because they're so kind of like dense and a lot of themes and a lot of just more. It was more like visual at times and just, you know, strictly story driven. So, Yeah, good picks. I mean, for me, yeah. um, I would definitely uh, agree with a lot of what you kind of, the ones that you kind of highlight. I mean, Deadpool 2 was definitely the, the most surprising one that I enjoyed the most because um, I kind of went into it expecting just another redo of the first one, but I thought it was better than the first one. It was just very yeah, clever. Yeah, me too. Very clever. Um, so I really enjoyed kind of watching that. Um, you know, I think that Black Panther didn't live up to the hype. I, I, I don't think it's that great of a movie in hindsight. It's, it's a tough to watch again just because there's a lot – just kind of trudges along a little bit. So yeah. it, uh, you know, I don't think it's that strong of a Marvel movie. Um, it's, sure. it's a lot more political than the other ones. So maybe that's the place that it needs to take within that, where you mm-hmm. have like Ant-Man's a little bit more, the lighter comedy, um, you know, than some of the other ones, like, you know, where your Iron Man's or Captain America, more about an individual's personal struggle with, you know, different things. Um, well, Black Panther still has those elements, but there's a lot more politics involved in that one than some of the others. Um, That's true. I really enjoyed Isle of Dogs. I thought that was probably the most artistic yeah. movie that I enjoyed the year. Um, so I can't, you know, I enjoyed that one. Solo was fun. That was the best popcorn movie, I'd probably say. Yeah. Um, For me, least, that was Solo and Ready Player One. Yeah, those are great popcorn um, movies. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I think that's the, you know, that's kind of what does it for me there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Leave No Trace was also probably my favorite drama that I saw. Mm -hmm. Um, That was a, I like that movie. Yeah, I got to check that one out. Is that available for rent anywhere? Yeah, you can just get it on iTunes. It was like 99 cents, I think, this week or last week, or so when we're recording this, it might might still be available. Apple TV, iTunes, rental. Okay. Yeah. What about? Okay, so we got some of the movies out of the way. How do you feel about, um, you know, the Netflix stuff? The, well, the, like the a streaming I think shows, like, like Narcos Mexico was really good. Um, I was really looking forward to that one for a long time. Um, when it yeah, came out, really you know, good. It was, it's one of those things you just kind of burn through within a couple of days. Really, I mean, it's just that good. So, you know, um. Strong acting, like really good story, uh, demands your attention more or less. So that's kind of how it pulls you along uh, throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, House on Haunted Hill was really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, Haunting of Hill House. Keep messing that name up. It's okay. Take you know. your time. Take your time. Yeah. Um, that was really cool. I mean, it was really well done. It was a nice take on on just like the... Not like the shock horror stuff, but it it had great acting and great scenes. And we talked about the long takes and a couple of the episodes, and that was really cool to see. 
Um, starting so to win me know, over a little bit for the suspense between like hereditary and something like that. It's like, I'm starting to kind of warm up to that genre where normally I would just didn't really care. Yeah. Um, I thought they did a good job with that one. Yeah, that's true. I mean, could have been a little shorter, but it was good. Yeah. I did like Ozark. Um, you know, that was, that was a good show. Um, to like catch up on and, and figure out what's going on. So that was entertaining. Um, Castle Rock, like I talked about before, I liked it for a little while, and then it started getting a little more, a little too like wormhole for me. Biggest disappointment. Um, yeah, I mean, I like it, it was just cool. Like for a couple, you know, I think for maybe the first half was really good. Sure, um, you could you could spot all the references and stuff, and then you're like, oh yeah, they're they're referencing Shawshank, they're doing Cujo, and then after a while, it just got a little too like sci fi y for me. A um, little too J.J. Abrams, which is okay. I mean, that's his own thing, but um, whatever. Um, biggest surprise show for me this year was probably Cobra Kai. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I say, you know, that that's just had like, it's kind of a good time, you know, it was like. I, it was I like it because this... it, it makes, it's terrible, but it makes fun of itself. And so that's right. why I think it kind of works because it takes things from when we're kids, you know, with yeah. Karate Kid, obviously. Um and it just, I don't know, it's, it's just kind of, it, it knows that it's not to be taken serious. And I think that's why it of works. Of course. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, good, but that's I mean, I, yeah, right. I, I mean, I think those shows for me were were good. It just, it's kind of cool to um, not have to leave your house and watch these shows and, and you're cool with it, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of what I got from all that. Okay. But Yeah, for me, I, I would say the other one's, that kind of stood out to me. Um, Wild Wild Country is a best documentary. Yeah. Um, Handmaid's Tale was um, was pretty good. I, I definitely enjoyed enjoyed that so far. Um, I would say the biggest surprise for me would be Dogs of Berlin. Yeah, which um, I just finished I, watching that one. Yeah, same here. So, what did you think uh, of the whole thing in, in retrospect? I thought it was great. I like I. I finished that one in just a couple of days. It really pulls you in. Um, and like, like you said before, like the character depth is really good. Like, you know, they, they kind of like surprise you with the way they go and how they interact. I, I think the two like homicide detectives who were just kind of like polar opposites, but they were both conflicted with other things that worked really well for me. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, it, it's just kind of be interesting. It, it kind of sets up like that, that, red card like task force thing they were doing it could be done in like other seasons with other like you know crimes similar so um that was, was really good i really liked it um glad you recommended that one to me because um yeah I, I like a good like cop show that's like realistic and doesn't wrap things up in an episode so it was like you know like a lot of like a good book you know sit down and reading a good book and seeing where it takes you you got a little bit like a I don't know how to say it. Like they kept the the characters kept getting dug deeper and deeper into a hole. So like, for example, the yeah. main character with his financial situation. Oh man. And then he kind of squirreled out of it. Yeah. Um, but it like, they kind of glo- you know, glossed over that part a little bit where yeah. all of a sudden, like I kind of lost connection. I'm like, wait, wait, how did he avoid all this accountability now? That and guy then, was so like, he made McNulty look like a choir boy. <laughs> yeah, that dude was a hot. Uh, mess. He was just like, oh, this and then this, and then it just kept like his past and everything. It just got, you know. But he, but he makes some good. He's good at it though. That's what's yeah. kind of like uh, seeing a corrupt cop who uses it for his advantage, right? Um, and so like even with like the reveals and the resolution of the main story, which I, in hindsight, like I probably should have seen that coming. Yeah, um, but I didn't, and I thought that they. You know, you see the other person's like struggling with the uh, yeah the good cop bad cop theme is obviously kind of strong here, but it's a little bit more richer than that. Yeah, um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, uh, so if you haven't seen it, check it out on Netflix. If you like uh, really rough German crime dramas, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of them out there for us. You know, <laughs> like oh, I know rough. so many. Yeah, I was actually yeah. l- looking for other ones. I was like, what other German crime dramas can you recommend for me? <laughs> Y'all see. Yeah. You, Google you now are getting some uh 
getting some preferences around here. Yeah. All right. Well, where do we go from here? Well, we got a big 2019 uh, coming up, uh, as we talked about in our last episode, a lot of live action remakes. Yeah, we have a lot of that. <laughs> got that a lot of live action. I mean, nothing I'm really looking forward to. No. I don't know. I mean, um, I, I mean, you get the Star Wars coming, you know, uh, which is going to be kind of cool. Uh-huh. And I mean, there's a, you get the new Avengers one that's going to be coming out. Tarantino. Um, Tarantino coming out, you know, so that's another one for people to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker movie, as we mentioned, Once Upon a Time in, in, in Hollywood. Um, what else is coming out? Glass. That's going to be probably the first movie I see of 2019. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's a, what January. Yeah, that's. I think that's where uh, our boy M Night might actually redeem himself a little bit more. It's a shot. Yeah, I mean, um, Split was good, but it's like this one could just really put him back up there again, which is kind of nice. It it almost kind of took like him to fall because he got so big so quick. Right. He kind of had his gimmick and his formula to when he got pigeonholed into it to where studios were only green lighting those types of movies for him because that's what worked. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how much of it is his fault or not. It may have just been like the modern cinema at the time. Um, but once he eventually just started cranking out, I mean, he hadn't made that many great movies in hindsight, to be honest. Like, uh, yeah, that hold um, up. Yeah. But I think that, um, once he had no budget to work with, then he started getting creative again, and that's when it started kind of coming together with something like Split. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, high hopes for Glass. Great cast. We'll see. Um, it, Chapter 2, you've got that to look forward to. Yep. So that'll be, you know, another one. Um, Scorsese's got the uh, his uh, crime drama, The Irishman, coming out. That's, you know, Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. Here we go. Um, mob hitman recalls his possible involvement with the slaying of Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, I think that's uh, Pacino's in that too, right? Yep. Yep. Pacino. You got another yeah. Terminator reboot. Oh, Jordan Peele's got us coming out. That's his, uh, next movie. Okay. Um, they just released a trip. They're going to release a trailer for that tomorrow. It's a horror Whoops. thriller about a mother and father that take their kids to their beach house expecting to enjoy time with their friends. But their serenity turns to tension and chaos when some visitors arrive uninvited. It's like a home invasion movie. Yes. Uh, We did mention Star Wars. Um, Rambo 5, Last Blood. (laughs) Yeah, Last 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 Blood, blood. maybe. I know. (laughs) Wrap it up. That's so stupid. Last Blood. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it makes sense, though, like... You know, there's a way to start it and end it. There you go. Yeah. So those are the notables that I see here that I've got on my my yeah. list of what's coming up. Oh, and Avengers Endgame. Yeah, I mentioned that already, I think. Yeah. So I think the sleeper hit could be Men in Black International. Oh. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth yeah. and uh, <laughs> William Neeson. William Neeson, yeah, International. Ooh. Yeah, it's in post-production. They got a trailer out for it. Looks kind of. Looks like it could be fun. Yeah. So yeah, that's we'll, that. We'll see. All right. Good stuff. What's what's uh? So the future of the podcast is looking good, huh? I have so a lot, far, more fodder to talk about. Yeah, I know. We got a lot more movies and things to kind of dig into, keep us entertained. But I know that we'll be also juggling some other stuff to try to add some variety here. Keep us uh, keep yeah. us interested. Of course. Yeah. What uh what are you watching for Christmas? You got any like movies like Christmas type movies you into? I don't or like movie? Christmas movies. Um, yeah. I think they're all stupid. Yeah. I mean they're, they're great when you're a kid, but as you get older, I mean I have strong feelings about Christmas. So so there's two ways I could look at it. And the and the older I get, the more I kind of back off my ideals. Um I'm just not a huge fan of anything that's like status quo. So right. because society kind of follows status quo with when people get time off, I get it. It's nice for families and stuff to get together because everybody gets the day off and it's nice to do that. Oh, it's a nice time to give gifts. And so, you know, I, I, I'm okay with all that stuff now, but 
what I, what I, the, the thing that's hard for me that I just kind of step back and look at is like, this is like a religious holiday that people yeah. celebrate that are not religious. Um, and they are totally cool with it. And that's just cause that's how society kind of, you know, bastardized it, so to speak. Sure. Um, and so that just kind of just feels weird to me because it's like if I'm celebrating Hanukkah or something else, it's like, well, you're not Jewish. It's like, who cares? You know, like, yeah. that would be weird for people. Where's but my for Christmas? Where's my it's gift? Okay. Yeah. I know. Um, but the other part about Christmas that that bothers me is the consumer side. And I think that, that was what retail did it for me. It's, it's yeah. the buy gifts for people because you're expected to, um, not because you really want to. Yeah. And but at the same time it is a it is a nice gesture. It is nice to at least do that kind of stuff for people. So the other part of me kind of thinks like, well, what if Christmas wasn't a thing? Would we just not gift anything to anybody? Or what would you know, how would society respond to that? Would there be some other holiday, holiday that would take <laughs> yeah. its time, you know? Yeah. I don't know. No, so I hear for you. me, like it's I think it's great for kids. You do the whole Santa thing and you lean into that. I mean, that's a kind of cool thing for kids to experience and stuff, but I don't like the, uh, um, the lore of Santa. I think it's really creepy. Yeah. Um, When you think about it, it's like, Oh, this omnipresent dude out there that knows everything. So you can get some gifts under the tree. It's just a strange, like treats his reindeers like slaves. Yeah, it's just a weird DNA to like put in a kid. Yeah. Really think about it. Like, oh, this comes from uh, Germany too. Strange so. man's gonna come in our house, and yeah. he's gonna leave you stuff that I worked and paid for, and I get no credit. Right. Um. I don't know. We, we'll leave him some cookies because he needs to feed that. Yeah, that he's beast, really you know? hungry. Yeah. It, it's a. I mean, I I like that you can kind of create this fantasy world for kids. Yeah. Um. And that's like it's cool to believe in those kinds of things. You know. Um, but at the same time, it's just, it's kind of strange. So if like we had to start all over and make a new version of like, uh, replace Santa with something else for kids, I mean, what would it be? Right. Um, I don't know. I, I probably lean more towards like the horror side, like it's, you know, Bigfoot and, but he, you know, he's, he's here and he's going to rip you out of your bed if you are, are a little shit to your parents and. You know, rip yeah. your limbs off, and I don't know. <laughs> Get yeah, a little twisted. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. It's, it's just how funny how we equate things with certain holidays, and you know, we, well, we're I, not I, supposed to mix state and religion, but we do. So it's like it, it all comes together. Yeah, and it's also like I mean, just look at Easter. That's another example. It's like, oh, yeah. this is when our Lord and Savior you know, was crucified and, and spent three days in the cave and came back out and resurrected. And that's like, he was a that's zombie the whole foundation of our religion. Let's, uh, let's have a bunny and go find yeah. its eggs. You know, it's just so strange. And there's like, a that great, kind of uh, there's a great, there's a great Bill Hicks bit about that. What, you know, how we, how we associate that holiday with a bunny rabbit, you know, and like, no, you know, it could, uh, it could be anything, you know, it, it could be like a goldfish, you know, leaves Lincoln logs under your sock drawer or something like that. It's just like, it's very like arbitrary. So, I mean, it could be really sure. anything, but it, it you know? pisses me off because I, I don't get the feeling that like a lot of people share the same sediment because they don't want to ripple waves or they're worried about other people think when they yeah. express opinions. And I, I don't really care. And that's kind of like, like, a, oh, like, you know, instead of weakness. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Cause not everyone celebrates Christmas. Sure. It's like, well, sure. whatever. Yeah. It I've is what it happy is. Happy holidays. But the, I guess what I'm saying is, is, is you feel, I guess, woke <laughs> or, yeah. um, like you're just a little bit more, it's hard to not feel elitist, I guess, because yeah. I feel that my point of view is superior um, because I'm recognizing something and I, and I choose to not really embrace it or participate in it. Um, and society and status quo are the ones that make you feel guilty when you don't support that. And that's what really bothers me the most Right. Is when people give you hell because you don't support it or see it the same way. Uh, but in reality, you're kind of taking your principles and ideals over just assimilating. And I think that that's more noble. Um, I wish more people shared that. So I I often oust myself really quickly as like the curmudgeon of my 
social groups and circles and stuff like that because of that. And I've always been that way. Um, yeah. and I embrace that role because I feel that, you know, you got to lead by example and yeah. So for me, like the more the years have gone on, I've, I've, um, I guess what's the term I've indulged or I've just supported or participated more and not necessarily pushed my ideals as much. Um, you know, yeah. but we also had a strange childhood, you know, where, uh, um, you know, holidays were really cool up until a certain point in time. And then they just be, kind of became that status quo type of situation, you know? And yeah. so I think, I think that had we been raised, a li- you know, we didn't have the luxury that I think a lot of very privileged families can have where you kind of, you know, you got to face the facts when you're young, like, oh, we're poor and we don't have a whole lot. So you face mm-hmm. the noise when you're younger, um, and you kind of come to terms with it. You guys got to grow up faster, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, where when I know it's kids, okay to that, think free thought. You know, it's okay to yeah, yeah. Start I mean, thinking I know, for yourself I know and questioning that, things. Absolutely, because because I know kids that were raised um, very cushy and never had to deal with any adversity or really pay attention to any adversity that their parents and stuff that have to go through. And there definitely is a uh, a different just air about them in general to how they think the world works when everything yeah. kind of comes your way or you don't really have to, they don't really appreciate things as much. And so when you, when you come from a, you know, um, a background of little means um, and you start to recognize it as you get older, you start to appreciate what you do have um, rather than kind of thinking that everything you should get everything you want for Christmas, you know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So maybe Sean that's the where curmudgeon. I'm, yeah. Ah. Hey, hey. Well, we are, we are recording this uh, Christmas Eve. I have some breaking news. Actually, this came across my phone. This isn't about Kevin Spacey, is it? No, no, no. Um, this is to, uh, Los Angeles, Nakatomi Plaza. Uh, shots have been fired and there's a possible hostage situation unfolding. So, Oh, shut uh, up. <laughs> please, uh, please look online for more information on that. Um, we do hear that there might be a, uh, um, off duty cop inside, um, who uh, has a particular set of skills that might enable that person to uh, take down these, um, these uh, terrorists. So please check yeah. it out. Yeah. Nakatomi Plaza. Nakatomi that's, uh, Plaza. That's yeah. West LA. Yeah. Jeez. I hope everybody's yeah, okay uh, over there. Mr. Uh, T- Mr. Takashi. Uh, I think it's up on the 50 something floor. So gotcha. He was holding a Christmas party and uh, some not very nice people came in and took him out. So, yeah, um, I, yeah. I just looked it up online. There are reports yeah. that there is an LAPD officer on scene. Um, oh, Sergeant Al Powell is been kind of oh. um, monitoring the situation. I guess there's some explosions. Oh no! Up high, yeah, it's not looking good. Okay, Al Powell. All yeah, right, he, he's okay. he was on the thing, and he was like, "I'm at Nakatomi. I'm under gunfire. I need some backup assistance right. now. Now, God damn it, uh-huh. now." That's that's ah. the quote that we have on here. Um to call the feds in. The guy inside is being referred to as Roy. Okay. So, yeah. Roy, okay. Well, if you know, if I had uh, I could trust in Roy to handle this situation. Yeah. Even if he had no shoes on. Oh, KTLA is now releasing some some quotes or stories about Al Powell who had some time where he fell from grace because um, there was a moment in his career where he accidentally shot a kid that was 13, I guess. It was dark. He couldn't see him. The kid had a ray gun, oh. but it looked real enough, I guess, according to reports. Um, but when you're a rookie, you know, they can't teach you everything about being a cop except, you know, how to live with the mistake. Anyways, yeah. reports saying that Al Powell just couldn't bring himself to draw his gun, his gun on anybody else again. That's a little tragic. Ooh. Yeah, it's just uh, relegated to being a patrolman. Yeah, so, so hopefully everybody's okay over but, at the Nakatomi yeah, Tower. Yeah, it might be his chance at redemption. <laughs> yes, indeed. We'll, we'll see. All right. Well, it, keep keep it up on the news, everybody. Just uh, keep an eye on that. Yeah. It's uh, kind of tragic. It has to happen on Christmas Eve, but yeah, uh, we're praying for the people inside Nakatomi Plaza. So just to kind of you know close out on a couple things, just to remind everybody, the the biggest news stories of this year were kind of stupid. 
Um, yeah. You had the royal wedding. You had the the twelve boys in the cave in Thailand. You had the whole Facebook right. Cambridge Analytica scandal, which is still kind of going on. You had the North Korea stuff going on with Kim Jong Un and Trump and all that <laughs> kind of crap. We've been dealing with net neutral neutrality. Um, you know uh, the the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, which have been interesting. Oh, you know, man. Yeah. Puerto Rico, eleven months without electricity. That's a that's a mess. Um, yeah. And, you know, Iraqi voters had their first election since driving out the Islamic State, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so those are some of the biggest things that kind of happened this year. Um, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of what the news, as I get older, too, I just start to turn, tune a lot of that stuff out. It's just, it's just noise. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like, well, things resolve themselves naturally over time, and it's, you know, I... People I see like really get worked up and stressed out about our current political situation. It's like, well, you could turn the news off. You know, you don't have to involve yourself in it unless it's like your livelihood or if it's your passion. But you know, a lot of people that it's not, it's neither one of those. It's like they just get so worked up. But it's like either, you know, either go vote, you know, and if you didn't win or get who you wanted, at least you made your voice known, or you know, just just disengage yourself for a while and, and try that and see what happens. Because, you know, when you turn the news back on, things will pretty much be the same and, you know, things will be where they're at when you left it off. Yeah, I don't pay attention to much news at all. I'll look at, like, Apple News or headlines and just kind of see what's going on, but I don't really don't read a whole lot. That's kind of, like, more bright right. point for me because it's, unless I'm curious, I'll, I'll, I'll monitor it and I'll pay attention, but I don't really, I'm not engaged with it, so I don't really care. Um, yeah. You know, what I'm not looking forward to in 2019, and this is what, pisses me off the most and maybe this is just a social media thing because I'm starting to kind of not really care about social media. Not that I ever really did, but um, paying attention to it less and less. And that is what celebrities are going to die and how many people are going to be yeah. like, Ugh, 2019. So brutal, you know, yeah. 2018 was one of those years where it was like, Oh, this year is just terrible. It's like, why? Cause uh, yeah. another person died. Who's no different than you or me. They just, did different work. Yeah. Than, you know. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I that that whole kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Not well, looking that's forward that to that. That's that thing of the Oscars where they just play all the people with the music and it's like, yeah, oh, it's that person jerk. died and I mean I know, but it's you know, it's like there's a lot of people that die that aren't famous yeah. and they you know, or there's people that are heroes that aren't famous and they do stuff every day and they don't ask for attention. So Or they don't get the attention. Think about those people too. Yeah. Because everybody who dies about, is somebody's, you know, somebody's kid, somebody's brother or sister or parent and that's what everybody shares right. equally um because they did art it's like usually when people complain about celebrities dying i personally believe that that is their own narcissistic way to get attention um sure i don't really think that they have empathy or truly care they're more like oh well i really like the work that that person did and i think you can res- pay your respects for the- something like that um especially if they created art in any way that moved you or had a positive impact. So like I appreciate and respect that, but you, anything in in regards to art, you have to separate art from the artist and you don't know the artist. So whenever a celebrity dies, you're looking at what the, uh, the work that they've done that you're not going to get anything new. Um, but if you don't know that uh, him as a person, then there's no kind of connection there. I mean, what, really, yeah. what are you trying to get at? So, I felt like like uh, when Bowie died, you know, it was like a lot of people were really torn up about it. But I was like, you know what? The guy left behind a, an incredible body of work. Yeah, he, he had he had been doing stuff up until literally like the day before he died. So it's like appreciate that and no, don't dwell so much on on you know him dying or him passing. It was his time. I mean, the guy wasn't like. Uh, you know, he wasn't an altar boy, so he did a lot of crazy stuff. But um, a lot of artists are tortured, and either if, if they don't die at their own hand, they're, like, slowly killing themselves, and that's just a lot of them. I mean, not all of them, but it, it's kind of sad, but that's just the nature of the beast. That's what it is. Yeah, um, it's true. And so that's going to be the next next thing that kind of comes along is, like, all right, well, who died this year? And right. What are we all going to do about it? How are we all going to feel? I mean, there's a yeah. lot of people who people die all the time. And it's like, I don't know. Life is one of those weird things where you can kind of just 
you know, float through it and be ignorant to a lot of that. But, you know, hundreds of thousands of people die and are born every day. And it's just how life goes. Um, yeah. For me, the only time I, I feel like when somebody passes, for example, and, you know, I'm sad for that is because that individual actually had a positive impact on a lot of people beyond um, just being an actor or just something like that. So like if they're, if sure. they're a means to philanthropy work or, you know, they, they are a good example for other people. Like there's not surprisingly like lots of people in power and influence don't do anything with it. Um, no. And so that's where I'm kind of like, well, you had a good opportunity and you didn't do nothing. If I was as rich and had as much influence as you, maybe I feel like I would probably try to give back a hell of a lot more. Um, sure. But that's just my, I could easily say that now, wait until I get millions of dollars in a giant ego. And then, you know, who knows? Yeah. I go from there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we got that look forward to. Uh, hey. hey, Hey, all right. Well, that's 2018, folks. I don't know if we bummed you out or not, but I had a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So I think uh, coming up on our next episode, we're going to need to find something new to talk about since we did the uh, Christmas gift of talking about 2018. Oh, yeah. We'll find something. We'll figure something out. But, hey, we appreciate you guys stopping by and listening to the podcast. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe on your podcast player or whatever you can follow us over at the harsh review on facebook or the harsh review.com and anyways hope your uh, holidays are nice and chill like ours and come up with some good plans for new year's go do something fun celebrate another year where celebrities are gonna die yes yes (laughs) all right that'll do us for this week my name is sean and i'm ryan have a good one We'll be right back.